So, um, first of all, could you introduce yourself? Uh, I'm Jonathan Darracourt. I'm the global head of Watches for Bonhams. Awesome. So, um, what have you been doing here today at the auction? Today, um, I've been basically telephone bidding. Um, okay. We have three, three forms of bidding. There's telephone bidding, uh, bidding in the room, and absentee bids, um, and also um, internet bids. Okay. And you have been in charge of telephones? Uh, I was on the telephones, not in charge. I'd okay. leave that up to our, our, our customer service girls who, who managed to do, do that job with, the, with the, a great deal of uh, um, better than I could. <laughs> So what specifically were you doing on the telephone? Um, so people, um, want if they want to bid on a particular lot, uh, mm -hmm. we call them up um, on that lot uh, and we bid on their behalf. So we're basically a go-between between, between, between uh, themselves and the auctioneer. Okay. Mm -hmm. And how did you get into this line of work? Um, I was a jeweller uh, and, uh, and got very interested in watches and uh, um, got, um, was able to um, study watches and uh, um, basically... Got, got in through the side door, I saw an advert and thought, sounds interesting, I went for it. So you're a specialist? I'm a specialist, yes, absolutely. In watches or in jewellery? Just just watches, just watches. yes. yeah. Although I, I, I studied jewellery, but uh, no, I, I, I'd converted my study to, to, to watches. Um, so what do you think is special about Bonhams here, these kind of auctions that go on? Um, because we're we're pretty multifaceted and we we, we cover a, a lot of a lot of breadth in the market. We have our um, um, Knightsbridge um, branch that does watches from five hundred pounds to about three thousand uh, pounds, and then here three thousand pounds to what you saw today. Anything, anything. Yeah. <laughs> anything um, so, in terms of actual sales today, was there anything that you thought undersell underselled? Um, amazingly not, no. no. There was nothing. I went, oh, that was cheap. Uh, no, it was a really very good buoyant sale, so very happy with it. Very few lots actually unsold. I think we sold um, nearly 90% of the lots today. 90% of the lots? Yeah, yep, wow. absolutely. Mm -hmm. Even from my limited knowledge of auctions, that is a huge yes. percentage. Um, so was there anything you thought oversold? Um, I, even if I did, I wouldn't say. Um. <laughs> but no, no. I, I think I think things went for the the fair market price. And the thing about watches is that they have quite finite prices because they're they're, they're series made things, so you, they're always comparables. It's not something like a, a painting that there really is just one of, uh, mm -hmm. and it's quite difficult to to gauge where where the interest will go with with watches because they're series. Then you've there, there are ones that have sold before, so mm -hmm. um, no, not really. Okay. What's the most mental thing you've ever seen happen at an auction like this? A mental thing that I've seen? Yeah. Good grief. Um, I mean, so I recently watched, now this might not be anything to you, but uh, the Leonardo da Vinci painting going mm -hmm. for $450 million. Mm, yes, Have you yeah. ever seen anything like that going on? Um, I've, I've seen things get, attain fantastic prices, certainly. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, we had uh, um, uh, um, a, a, lot, a, a lot today that was... Uh, um, that, was was very well sold so uh, i can't think of something completely insane um no i have to pass on that one <laughs> That's chill. um so if you could choose to buy any of the watches that were on sale today which one would you go for uh, the 8171 Patek Philippe. It's called a padaloni because it uh, looks like a, or was nicknamed by the Italians as a, as a frying pan. I saw that in the catalogue. That one's cool, yeah. Uh, and it's and it was it's a beautiful watch. And, yeah. and we had it in for 25,000 because it has a wrong dial. Uh, with a with the right dial, it would it would be much more than that. But I was very pleased because it sold for around 45, uh, which is very much the mark. What do you mean by a wrong dial? What does um, that mean? What it means is that the, the dial at some point has got damaged um, and then it's been reprinted and, and there, was, there was a time when reprinted dials were not done fantastically mm. um, and this, this was one of those, so it was probably done in the 80s uh, and you can see that it's not, it's not a, a correct Patek dial but it's still a beautiful watch. Mm.